You calm my eye with the fragile hematizing God. You are as beautiful as flowers and fragile as glass. You are truly awesome, unique piece of art. How many threads made you? It was a real privilege for us to come. You know, we've got a massive cohort of over 300 students and we've got this beautiful building with all these wonderful treasures just on our doorstep and yet it's so easy to bypass the things that are there. The children love to come. For some of them it was the first time they'd ever been, for others it was more familiar. But because we've got such a myriad of students, there was something that was culturally significant for nearly every student. And because of the range of the work you have from classical to modern, there was something that provoked everybody's imagination. On a practical level, it's led to students being able to explore with their teachers all sorts of different symbols and cultures and different art and themes in art and writing. But I think on a longer term basis, it's made our students recognise that art is not the preserve of the middle class, the middle aged, the white. It's for everybody. And it doesn't matter whether they understand it as they think they ought to understand it. They can find meaning in there for them. Electronic portion. You are fantastic. Fast as lightning. How old is the universe? The Art and Science of Noticing is a new way of museums and galleries connecting with schools. Developed by Bradford Museums and Galleries, it promotes inquiry and curiosity, linking directly into classroom teaching across the whole curriculum. We want to look at the link between experiences, drawing and literacy and the potential that this might have in our buildings. We allow children the freedom to select objects, images and the parts of our buildings that they find interesting. There's no right or wrong, it's what they notice that's important. So if we use the side of our pencil and we go backwards and forwards, we start off quite heavy. We've been developing the art and science of noticing with a number of local schools over the past three years to ensure that it meets their needs. We work with teachers and our collections to stimulate learning through inquiry. We needed a learning approach that was very adaptable, that we could use to study anything from dinosaurs or social history to modern art or engineering. We wanted our workshops and activities to make the most of being in the museums and galleries environment, not just in an education room, but immersing the children in the spaces with the artwork and with the objects, all of the things that are stimulating and exciting about being in a museum. It's recording through drawing, developing drawing skills and annotating drawings, but then it's also giving pupils the time to analyse and reflect on what they have recorded and sharing this with their peers and the whole group. Okay, my favourite object was the followed the pattern because it was all scaly and it had a fish in its mouth. It was like an alligator and a frog put together in one they all had their little reasons for choosing it. Each child was going for something different for different reasons. So again, it's showing the creativity and their independence of what they want. And I saw a lot of the children actually reading what they were, the objects that they were looking at, not just blindly going for anything. They were just actually investigating it, which was, per which was really, really good for their skills, mm -hmm. developing them further. Who could share? Why did you notice it? Literacy is a key priority for a lot of our schools and we know from independent research that drawing and annotating can improve concentration and literacy. Oh, she's coming up with the actual fossil name now. We might need <laughs> to copy it. Fantastic though there. So yes. maybe... It's about concentrating on noticing and questioning what we notice and why. My animal is tawny and tan with razor blade claws as well as feathered and it hoots. It is a predator and prey and has flappy wave-like wings. They live in hollow ancient trees but have no nest. They lay eggs in deep holes inside of the trees. 
They are fluffy like a cushion, yet sly like a smart robber. I would like to ask you a question. Would you like to live in a different habitat? And what is your favourite food? The Art and Science of Noticing is really not about giving all the answers to children, but providing starting points that can then form inquiry or follow-up investigation in the classroom back at school. It's about us working with the teachers to provide a meaningful experience which is going to have some relevance when they get back to the classroom. The art and science of noticing brings our museums to life with children's ideas. They're so engaged and I really believe that it stems from allowing the children to follow their own natural curiosity and giving them the space to choose, think and reflect in our spaces. Cliff Castle had a lot of animals and I liked the parrot the most. That would be really colourful. It caught my eye. We want children to uncover the things in our buildings that they can connect with. We want them to ask questions, find answers, have ideas and learn new things. Even better, we want them to bring back family and friends to share what they have noticed.